Oh, no. Scott, you are kind of handsome. Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David, and today I want to finish off Five Nights of Flirting. Scott! 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 I, for I forget where Scott is. Scott! Scott, it's your turn! Night one shouldn't be so hard with a friend around, right? Haha. <laughs> uh. Uh. But, now that I think about it, maybe it wasn't a smart idea to hunker down in the storage room while the animatronics are roaming. Hmm, maybe. Just maybe I wasn't the best guy to pick to hang out with on your first night. Actually, out of all the guys, I'm one of the few that's been stuffed into an animatronic suit and survived. Wait, what? You have? I like to think it's because I'm really thin for your average guy. There were a lot of cross beams and wires inside, but... Well, I managed to tuck my head down a bit when I was being crammed inside. The rest is history. Did something happen to your head and it had to be replaced with a phone? You inquire as to how he managed to do all that without getting hurt. He didn't say he didn't get hurt. <laughs> oh, that's not to say I didn't get hurt. I actually got hurt pretty badly. It took both Mike and Vincent to pull me out of the suit. In the end, I wound up bedbound for at least a week. The guys were nice enough to cover my shifts for me till then. It's thanks to them I didn't get fired. <laughs> me and Vincent are the longest standing employees here, actually. So, given that, I should be more of a veteran in terms of being able to survive the week. But I've had more than my fair share of close calls. There is a self-punishing look riding across Scott's face. What will you do? Uh, I would try to say something kind. You try to say something, but it's as if he doesn't even hear you. <laughs> ah, maybe I'm just not cut out for this line of work, but then again, is anyone? Well, believe it or not, it's almost 6 a.m. Let's pack up and get ready to leave. Scott seems to have a lot on his mind. Maybe there's a way to cheer him up. Hmm. Scott! Hey, Scott. Oh, hey there, Espoir. I was just fixing up the last few bits of Freddy's head here. Just because the things try to kill me doesn't mean I shouldn't patch up the missing fur. Plus, um... I'm sure the boss wouldn't be happy if there was a still-dried blood left in the robot's fluff in the morning. You know, like the one on stage. Oh, Scott. Do you ever think that when something happens you can't control, that changes your life for the worst? That you didn't deserve it? That maybe there was something you could have done to prevent it? Or maybe that you should have been there? But, in the end, you know that there's nothing you can do. That there's no stopping what happens, and now the course of things change. That's how I feel, a lot. I feel like a lot of my endeavors are, well, a bit useless. How would you change it, if you could? I'm not sure. I'd probably go back and slap myself, tell myself to never take this job in the first place. Hey man, you've got everyone here to help. Thanks, that means a lot. And, um, have a safe walk home tonight, okay? Oh, what is bothering you, Scott? Scott seems very tired, maybe even ready to give up the ghost. Phrasing! Ah, just a few more years. A few more years, and I can finally be done with this place. Oh yeah, it said somewhere, uh, he's like, in depth, in depth of them for five years. Aww. Worrying that he'd dwell longer on whatever subject was on his mind, you clear your throat. Uh, oh, you're here. Sorry. Unfortunately, I wasn't paying as close attention as I should have been. Yeah, you're lucky it was me and not Chica. Sometimes my head tends to wander. It can take you to great faraway places. Or it can remind you of your greatest failures. Sometimes it's a miracle I can tell the difference from reality and my nightmares. Ah. Oh, sorry about that. You didn't need to hear all that. I was rambling a bit, and now, look at me. 
Oh no, it's already 1 a.m. The animatronics will be out and roaming about. Quick, let's get to the office. That was close. Here, it's my job to keep you safe and protect you from them, and I almost got you killed. He places his hands over his face. He looks exhausted. <laughs> you can physically feel Scott shaking, his body twitching against yours as sweat pours down his face. He's scared, but he's making sure to protect you. Oh. Before long, the animatronic loses interest, deciding no one is inside. Mm. I, I pr promised I'd protect you. If it would have gotten me, at least you'd be okay. You could hide. Oh, Sky! Sky! You want to reach out and touch him as he moves away, but you refrain. End of shift. I... I used to maintain all the animatronics here. I know which one's broken. It's Freddy. I... I've tried to fix the suit before, but it's just never worked. I, I've never been able to figure out what's wrong. So tomorrow, we'll fix him. You mean you just couldn't see the hat that was on the shelf that I got down with the cane that you gave to me? Like, huh, there's something weird about Freddy. It's like he's missing his hat or something. Hey there, how are you doing? I, I just got a little banged up looking around for where that darn bear was hiding. Wanted to, uh, help you out, you know? But unfortunately, I got caught for a brief second. Ooh. You look at the wound, which was swollen and red, splashes of blood staining his work shirt. Tearing off a piece of your own work shirt, you begin to make a makeshift pressure bandage to stop the bleeding. It was all you had to work with. Wasn't there some bandages or something somewhere? Oh no, you don't have to do that. They'll dock your pay for ruining one of your shirts. I'm already gonna catch an earful for mine. You give him a look, as if to shush him and the other gave a frown, as if upset that he caused you to waste a portion of your pay. I... I should be saying thank you, shouldn't I? I appreciate what you did for me, I really do. I just don't want you being stuck in here with me. Not as if I don't want to see you. I just don't want you to spend your youth here. You give a smile as you finish fixing up his wound, and standing up, tell him tomorrow you can look for the Fred boy then. The Fred boy. Well, if you say so. I suppose I wouldn't be much help in this situation anyhow, would I? <laughs> ah, well, for now, let's just relax and watch the cameras. Maybe we can at least learn something tonight. Scott's calling from outside the room. Uh-uh. I b believe the animatronic we're looking for is in the back storage area. The biggest problem about the entire thing is that I haven't the slightest as to where the key is, and I've worked here the longest. Oh, I thought he was the one putting it there. We may just have to search around for it. Are you alright with that, Espoir? It wasn't like you had a choice, so giving a nod, you motion for the other to follow you. No worries. I've been watching this place fairly closely since yesterday. We won't get hurt. Well, probably. Uh, maybe. Really glad nothing's actually chasing me. So who's been putting the key here? Ooh. Who's been putting the key there, then? I'm impressed. You managed to get into the back room. I just wanted you to play with us again, Scott. Maybe Espoir could play, too. Uh, oh, you mean why you stuffed him in a, sh in a suit? We could all be happy together. It could be like old times. Mm -mm. Scott, what you talk about? Freddy! I'm so, I'm so sleepy, sleepy Scott, Scott. But, I but I still want to play. play. You, used you used to play with us all the time when we were still alive. You, and all your little friends, you were inseparable. So, so why, wouldn't why wouldn't you let us have you? Why wouldn't you let us keep you forever? Why wouldn't you let us stuff you in a suit? We could have been a family. Forever friends. You know very well that's not healthy for you, or any of the other kids, little one. 
You need to rest. You can play again once you wake up. But I don't, I don't want, want to sleep, sleep Scott. Scott. What if I don't wake, wake up, up again? again? <sighs> you will. It just won't be here anymore. You'll be in a better place, where you can play with your friends all day. Just wait and see. The child nods as you move forward and replace the item atop the bear's head. feel like that would be really tough to do. He's very big. Remember, Remember Scott, Scott, you promised. You want to ask so many questions. The horrors of Fazbear's had ended only a mere few days ago, and so many things swirled in your head. I was always willing to play with the kids. Their parents were too busy for them. Now that I think about it, maybe I was just happy to have kids, no matter whose they were. Humoring their games of hide-and-seek, or playing tea party and letting them paint my nails all sorts of odd colors. Just for me to wash it off when I get home. I worked day shift then, and back then, I let them down. Someone. He's silent as he looks back at you. Well, at least I've got you. Thank you for being my dearest friend. Oh. I... oh. Um... Thanks for the comforting gesture. It means a lot, actually. Well, believe it or not, it's almost 6 a.m. Let's pack up and get ready to leave. Okay, uh, so this is Scott's bad ending. Hmm? What? You woke with a start. Your head hurt. Had you been knocked out? What for? Standing up, you looked around the room for Scott. Nowhere to be found. Did they just burst in, knock me out with his Fredbear paw, and just drag Scott away like Princess Peach? You were supposed to figure out where the Freddy animatronic was. Mm-mm. What was that? You decided to find out. Oh no, his phone! R Run. P please Espoir, don't stay here. Your legs were frozen. You couldn't move. And soon, you felt something sharp hit the back of your legs before you crumpled to the floor. Oh no! <laughs> now we can stay and play together forever. Just us. You'll both be my parents from now on. Forever and ever. Ah! I feel like a lot of my endeavors are, well, a bit useless. What exactly do you mean, Scott? I, I mean, it's nothing you should have to worry about too much. Just an old man's thoughts, I guess. No matter what happens, I'm in your corner, Scott. I, uh, well, thank you. It, it really means a lot to me. And now that you mention it, I suppose I got the others to help me when I really need it, don't I? If I hadn't left messages and given them advice, they'd be... The idea of your friends dying leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. Thank you for the pep talk, Espoir. I really needed it. It's about time to head out. Uh, be sure to, well, you know, don't forget anything and, um, actually, can I walk you home? Ooh, there's some papers caked in blood. You found someone's hospital bills. Hospital bills? Ah, it shows the medical bills that Scott has accumulated during his time working here. Ooh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, hello, hello there, Espoir. Ah, I, I seem to have gotten myself into a bit of trouble. Can I bother you for some assistance? You make your way over towards Scott and look at the wound. You won't be able to pull out the metal without him adjusting his mask. Metal? Ooh. That's a mask? It's fine. You can take it off. It comes off? Nobody questions that. Well, I guess nobody questions why Vinny is purple, but... Gently, you grip the clasp of the phone-like helmet and tug it off, ignoring what's underneath until you successfully bandaged his shoulder. Oh no! Oh, ooh, 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 but oh no! Scott, you are kind of handsome!
There. That's much better. Thank you so much, Espoir. That's a bit sore. You have to blink a few times to register just how amazing it is that Scott has a real head. <laughs> yeah. The whole time you've known him, he's always worn the mascot helmet. You don't think I'm always just wearing that, are you? I shower without it, and I have to eat sometime, you know? He presses you a bit closer to him, a wince of pain leaving his lips, as if needing comfort. Sorry, I won't be of any use tonight. Perhaps we could search for Freddy tomorrow. Maybe by then I won't be so tired from all the blood loss. Eh. Yeah, you, you, you might want to do something about that, but then again, he does have a bunch of hospital bills already. Don't want to add another year to your five nights at Freddy's. With a nod, you rest your head on his non-harmed shoulder, listening to the sound of his heartbeat. Scott's injuries seem pretty bad, but you're sure he'll make a full recovery. Really? Scott's calling from outside the room. <gasps> he has a head! Amazingly, Scott isn't wearing his mask, and you accidentally commented out loud. <laughs> Scott touches the scar on his face before scoffing. I figured, if you're around, then I won't be too embarrassed about running around without my helmet. I mean, after all, it was originally something I wore for the kids, back when I worked the day shift. They said my face was scary. Hmm. I also wanted to thank you. I feel so much better today. I wish I had more time to show my appreciation. But we only have so long for you to fix the animatronics before you lose your job. And I feel as though I've stolen enough of your time anyhow. So, let's move on. Okay, wh what are we doing? So weird that you actually do have a head. He reminds me of my daddy. Not that he is, but he acts like my daddy did so long ago. You mean Vincent? Oh, oh no. Is that why you hang around him? Do you miss your dad too? Or is it for another reason altogether? Could be another reason altogether. <laughs> Freddy, or little ghost girl. Scott, I just wanted you to stay. I wanted to have someone to take care of us. You... you were always so kind to us. Just because I took care of you while you were still alive, it doesn't give you the right to try and kill someone. To kill me. Although, to be frank, I didn't have the slightest idea you were actually haunting the animatronics. That's why we wanted to keep you. You were the only one who understood us. The only one who cared for us. I missed my dad so much, I just wanted to see my daddy again. Uh, uh, I understand. Perhaps in a different world. I would have loved to have you as my daughter. But I can't do that now. You need to be a good girl and go to sleep. When you wake up, I'll come see you again. It won't be too many years anyhow. But, but that's, that's such a long time. I know. But it's all I can offer. I have someone else I need to take care of, too. Just in a different way. I... I understand. The child smiles warmly at Scott in understanding, but with a hint of sadness. You place the hat on Freddy, and she prepares to disappear. Maybe one day, you can be my dad. Maybe if I wish really hard. Oh... Baby! Wait, who's baby? Who oh, baby? Is that our baby? Baby. Scott was busy the last few weeks, running around and getting everything ready for a new addition to the family. It had been a couple years since the nightmares at Fazbear's had happened, and now you were able to lead a peaceful life, married and with a new member of the family. <gasps> Tis my baby! Do you think I've gotten enough supplies for the new baby? I mean, making the baby was the easy part, but now I'm sitting here worried that... that what if she doesn't like me? Do you think I'm too old for kids? Maybe this wasn't a good idea. You reassured him everything would be okay, as long as we don't live in America. Well, yes, it should be. Probably. Maybe. I... I just want everything to be perfect for us. For you. 
And if you think I can do this, then I'm going to be the best father I can be. You gave a smile, pressing a kiss to his lips. He was more than you could have hoped for. Scott looks down as a smile crosses his lips. No worries. Everything is going to be alright. Okay, Ellie? I cry tears of joy. Uh. At last. At last, we're in the end game. We're in the end game. I have them all. I have them all. Scott, Vinny, Fritz, Barbie, Chris, Jeremy, Mike. I don't know why I have two of Chris and Barbie, but that's pretty okay with me. Seven times. Seven times. <laughs> I have all the memories. I've lived seven different lives. And now it is time for the true end. I just gotta... Just gotta wait a little while. Gotta wait a couple minutes to get there. That's alright. <laughs> Editor me will take care of that. Okay. It's come down to this. Third night. I have all the memories. Chica. Do you remember now? Remember us? Remember them? You place your hand on the monitor and feel the warmth radiate through you, as if everything seems so familiar. You hear the voices of previous lives rustle through your mind. I don't know if you don't understand how likely it is we're going to die here, or if you just don't understand, but dang it, I don't want you to die. I know, I'm normally not very serious, but... Espoir? Thanks. For everything. I... I want it to get better. If... if I can't be happy for myself, I can never hope to make Espoir happy. I have someone else I need to take care of too. Just in a different way. I wish you would have come back so I could tell you all the things I never did. Should have seen that coming from the person that stole my heart in just a few days, huh? How can someone fall in love in just four days? I love you. And whether it's platonic or romantic, I don't care. I just know that I do. You can feel each and every life you manage to change through one reason or another, but you couldn't save them all. The ones you didn't take the time to know, you knew some of them still died. But perhaps there's a way to change all that. Is there? No. Isn't this interesting? Whom are you? T just give me espoir, and this can all be over, Victor. Oh, snap! Oh, no! It's a ghost off! It's an extreme ghost off! Hmm? What happened? Come on now. Why do you have to be like this? They've been down here for a whole day. Don't you think they're hungry? Thirsty? Or maybe their friends are worried that they'll never find the body. That voice? Who? You turn to look at the voices. You're disgusting. And if there's anything I know, it's that the only way these children will be able to rest as if you are out of the picture, permanently. Yeah? Well, without espoir, you're gonna have a hard time getting rid of me. Cause I'll land them before that. No! No, you won't! We won't let you! Time and time again, espoir has selflessly rescued us. All I did was put a bow tie on a bear. I don't know if I was rescuing anybody. What am I, an exorcist? She came to our aid when we begged for help. Now we'll help them any way we can. Hey, there's an open hatch under the stage. I've never seen it before. Who cares where it came from? Espoir's probably down there. Don't worry, Espoir. I'm coming to help you. You never forgot about me. Like heck, I'm gonna let you disappear on me like this. You've been sworn into my life. There's no way you can take that away from me. It's okay to rely on me. Sometimes you need someone to rely on every once in a while. Aw, oh, is this a super happy everybody coming to the rescue Sailor Moon ending? 
You can hear them all calling for you. The sound of footsteps echoing down the hall. <laughs> Gonna have to make this quick then. Oh no, you don't, you big bully. Yeah, ghost punch. <laughs> Listen here, you little brat. Oh no, he punched a ghost child. He touched a ghost child. <sighs> Ow. Oh. <sighs> oh snap, everybody's here. A spot where... What the fluff? I said... Back off! <sighs> Victor? Oh, who's Victor? He was an old co-worker of mine and Scotty Boy here. And... Barbie's dad. My father? Crap. Didn't the guy die years ago? I hope you know this still doesn't change my stance on ghosts. Sir! There's no way this is real. Ghosts don't exist, except for these ghosts standing right in front of me. Oh yeah, Chris? Cause I've been watching all of you. Remember. This face... <gasps> Le gasp! Oh yes, I'm a man of many faces. I'm sure you'll know me very well. Or perhaps I've spoken too much. After all, you won't need all the details when you're dead. Mm. Uh, I need to borrow some of that power of yours, Esper. You all can hear the story from me. Uh, it's fine, Papa. I'm fine. You taught me that big girls don't cry, right? Now it's time for you not to cry anymore. I... I'll tell you everything that happened. As you know, this all happened back in 1987, also known as the Bite of 87. Was that the Bite of 87? Why, yes, Markiplier. Yes, it was. But what most people don't know are the events leading up to it. For a long, long time, I forgot. But thanks to Espoir, I can remember everything so clearly again. We were eating pizza and having a good time. I was really sick and had just gotten better from doing all sorts of therapy where they put this stuff in a hole in my chest. I'd get it removed in a few days actually, since I was all better. But I still had to take medicine for a little while longer. You had leukemia, sweetheart. Those last few pills were the last doses you had to take, and you'd be all better. I remember that. Victor bought you a special pizza to yourself, so you wouldn't get sick. Or rather, just gave you one, since he owned the building. Mm-hmm. Me and the other kids were having so much fun, too. But then I started coughing, and Mikey said I needed to take my medicine. I didn't want to leave the party, and I didn't want my pizza to taste gross, so I told him no. We ended up getting into an argument over the whole thing. I... I remember that. You... You were my best friend growing up. I went off to hide in Pirate's Cove because I hated when you saw me cry. The rest is kind of fuzzy, but there was a man there. Oh no! Oh, so he went in Pirate's Cove and... Oh, oh. That same man that you mentioned is the man in this room. You don't recall, Mikey, but your head, it got really badly hurt. Foxy chomped down on you because he released the spring locks while he pushed your head inside. You're lucky your dad was there too, or you'd be dead. Th that's when Vinny and I saw Mike on the cameras. We had to rush over as fast as we could to get him out. But the darn thing's jaws were snapped shut. Ooh. It took all the strength I had to crack open the fox's jaws, so Scott could get him out. His parents were so distraught. There was so much blood. We were shocked that he was alive. Yep, yep. yep. and when, and when you, you saved him, him Papa, Papa, your hands yeah. were all bloody and cut up. You had to go to the hospital too. You were really hurt. It was worth it. For a small while, I was mad at you for saving Mikey instead of coming to save me. When you were saving Mikey, that man, he dressed up in one of the suits, the golden bonbon, and lured us away. 
I thought you'd got Golden Bond to come play with us, so I didn't think anything of it. But when he got us alone, he did really bad things to us, Papa. Grandpa, he hurt us. He hurt us so bad. I couldn't stop screaming for someone, anyone to hear. But by the time you found us, found me, I'd been dead for three whole days. I'm so sorry, baby girl. <laughs> then it came time for Victor to step in. He tried so hard to figure out who hurt us, and ended up finding Grandpa. Grandpa, he stabbed Victor in the neck, and when he pulled the knife up, he cut off some of his face with it. I couldn't do anything to help. I could only watch and cry. But Victor, even though he was injured, he rammed into the suit, and with that, Grandpa died too. The springs killed him, just like he tried to kill Mikey. <sighs> Victor casts a look to the ground. Despite getting revenge, he looks as though he failed. So, my father died? And he actually figured out who committed these terrible crimes? But what about the other deaths? There were so many people who died after that. I... That is a mixture of us. The children's fault. And his. What can I say? I'm a good motivator. Shut up, Grandpa! In time, we really did grow to hate this place. And with someone whispering in our ears, the Night Watch became our targets. The only one we didn't really harm was Jeremy. And... I think it's because I saw so much of myself in him. He was scared, timid, and alone. I felt for that, and it made it hard to even try to harm him. Especially when Mikey was around, keeping him safe. I... I understand what it's like to feel lonely sometimes. You just feel that sadness deep inside, and it's like something is trying to claw its way out. But it just falls back to the pit of your stomach. Chris was manipulated into staying here. The documents forged for him to remain here were in fault of Grandpa. He wanted to collect as many souls here as possible, and the more you suffered, the better. So, my parole in here was rigged from the start? Huh, go figure. And then there's you and Fritz, Espoir. The whole reason you were even here was because of a wish. A wish that someone could see their friend one last time because he felt that any day he could die and he'd never get to see you again. A uh, wish? So, it's my fault that Espoir got dragged into this whole mess. If I would have known that, I wouldn't have said anything. And now, they're the only one who can set us free. And this time, not as a dream, as a wish or a memory. This time it's for real. The time traveling espoir and all these ghosts. You blink in awe of everything you've just heard. It's quite the revelation, to say the very least. You mean we're all here because of some dumb purple grandpa ghost? Ah! Uh, you're going to ghost jail, sir. Where's that guy from Danny Phantom? The only reason I haven't torn you apart is because of their power. You bastard. You don't have the right to speak to anyone here. Not after you killed these kids. Worst part of it all, you killed your own granddaughter. Couldn't have had spawn of devils breeding with just anyone now. You didn't care about me. You raped my mother, and I wound up alone. Double jail. A thousand years jail. A million years jail. Sure, I made mistakes, but I loved Ellie with all of my heart. It doesn't matter what you were thinking, old man. You should have kept your darn nose out of our business. If you hadn't killed Ellie, she'd still be alive. And now you're going and threatening my family. You're gonna pay. Guys like you make me sick, and I'm about to pulverize a poltergeist. <laughs> We're just gonna gang beat uh, this ghost somehow. I never knew Ellie, but I know you've made my friends suffer so much. That's enough to make me hate your guts. He's got the power of God and anime on his side. Or maybe just anime. Because of them, and Espoir, I'm not afraid to keep living for tomorrow. 
That kind of talk comes from the same people I never want to be like. If you have power, or wealth, you should use it to help people who need it. Heck would be too kind of a place for the likes of you. Ellie was a sweet girl. Those kids were all sweet kids. You almost killed Mike. You make it seem like I should give a crap. Maybe. Maybe. Not, Not yet, yet you, don't, you don't. But you but will, will soon. soon. Espoir? Espoir? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I need your power one last time. Sure, I don't know. I don't know what power he, I got that you can use, but sure. Espoir. As sudden as the flash of light was, everything goes black. Thank you, Espoir, for everything, for helping us. We caused you so much pain, just like we did everyone else. Now we can rest. We can go to sleep. Only this time, there'll be no sorrow, because all of you, even Papa, will forget we exist. What? No! That's what I plan on doing with your power. Oh, and Espoir, I love you as much as I would a mommy or daddy. Goodbye. No! Don't forget the babies! Oh, thank god, you're awake. About time you woke up. Don't scare us like that. N not that I'm worried about Espoir too, but shouldn't we give them some space? It's a shame you don't feel good. I need to give you a hero's kiss. Okay, but I totally call first dibs. First... dibs? Uh, hey, let him rest, and then later we can decide if we can call dibs, alright? <laughs> Fine by me, I just want to cuddle. Fritz flops next to you, looping an arm around your shoulders. I'm alright with this ending! Just end all, all of you, we're all married now. We're all married now, get in here, all of you. We're all married to each other. <laughs> oh, cuddles sound nice. Oh... I'll be your footstool, my sweetness. <sighs> I'll just settle myself beside you. Is that all right? So, uh, are we all, you know, a thing? You take a moment, contemplating what Mike said, before a wide grin spreads over your lips and you nod. Looks like we're a thing, if everyone agrees. So, uh, I've never been in a, you know, Holly relationship. How does this work? Are we all together or date them separately? <laughs> Leave it up to the fans to decide how this works. There's more shippy fun and enjoyment that way. Um, what? Just ignore him, Jeremy. He's talking weird like he always does. You, you breaking the fourth wall there, Vincent? You sigh contentedly as everyone discussed the new event. Meh. You feel something wet hit your hand. A tear? Why were you crying? Shouldn't you be happy? It was almost as if something was missing, a piece of you that you couldn't quite put your finger on. What was it? Staring at the TV in silence, you become lost in your thoughts. Goodbye, Goodbye Espoir. Espoir. Take, care. Take care. Why wasn't their face with the words? Feeling everyone around you, you began to forget your sadness as you settled in. For some reason, however, if and when you had kids, the name Ellie sounded so nice for a young one. <laughs> Best ending. Best ending in most games that I've played. Poly relationship. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, I can't take it. Oh, I can't take it. That was beautiful. Well, there you go. That's the whole story. How it ended up is up to you to decide. Ellie's sacrifice made it so that everyone could live in peace. So, how about we don't let that sacrifice go to waste, huh? I'll never, I'll never forget, forget you, Espoir. Espoir. Let's make this fandom a better place. Uh. Ah, Ellie is a beautiful name. This game is dedicated to all of the fans who just want to have fun and enjoy fandom the way it should be. 
with friendly smiles and a fandom to welcome them with open arms. Ah! Ah! <laughs> so beautiful! Oh, these guys? All these guys and gals here? My new husbands and wife. My new husbands and wife. <laughs> That took a while, but that was beautiful. This game would have completely flown under my radar if it weren't for all those comments, so so thank you. Thank you for, for commenting me to play this game. I feel that I may have taken one step into the Five Nights at Freddy's fandom. I don't want to get lost in there, so <laughs> if anyone asks, it probably started with this game. I, I still don't actually want to play Five Nights at Freddy's, though. That's very scary. I don't want to do that. And all the characters. I really like all the characters from just everybody here was a really fun character to get to know. Like, I, I thought Vincent was gonna steal the show, but everyone in their own way has, like, something special about them. Like, Vincent, obviously being a horned dog who, ble who belongs in horny jail, but he's also a good father. Jeremy and Fritz, who are sweethearts, and, and Scott, who's, like, super handsome under his phone hat. And Mike and Chris being really protective sweethearts, too, and Barbie hitting me in the fields with uh, not asking people for help. So I don't know if these characters are in the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, I, I know somebody did get bitten at 87, and I know Phone Guy is somebody, and I know Purple Guy is somebody, but let me know in the comments if any of these characters are actually in the uh, Five Nights at Freddy's lore, because I don't really know. I, I know the basics, but I don't really know. Or are they solely in this game? I, I would like to know that. But thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night, and remember, there is always hope. <laughs>